Uh, we have the songs that we did with him recorded. We actually did a whole um, records worth of music with him before he passed away. And um, he'll, he'll just never be forgotten. We'll keep him alive forever, you know what I mean? Yep, yep. He definitely did was you, not. Did you guys release that record just with him on it, or was it just... No, we're, we're actually in the uh, process right now. We have eight full-length records um, that we have recorded that we're going to uh, re-release as soon as we get the politics of it all just it out because maybe some of them we can't do because of some people that were on them or whatever but whatever we can do we're going to try to release all of them now um that's cool we can't be stopped you got somebody to do some awesome art for you that photography oh yeah man i mean tr uh trevor <laughs> is great shep is one In of the, the best videos now what's up with these videos i've been seeing now it's, it just well, amazes me um the videos that you guys have been putting out in the production has been wicked awesome lately well it's, it's funny about the really videos cool. we don't uh what we do is uh pretty much um just try to catch people in their natural habitat like walking around and and you know like people love the people watch of course and i like to catch people doing things that they normally do that people want to see him doing like eating sleeping fucking uh whatever they, i mean really whatever they do and and you mix it together with the music and it, and it kind of all blends together no matter what music you put to it it's always going to work because it's just uh, it's all the human drama you know and and yeah. for some reason it all works out well because i think because the music's so universal and the people are so universal that there's no way that it can't work Rather than trying to figure out something and say, okay, here's this part, here's this part of this song, okay, here's where you do this or that. And we just let it happen naturally, and, and, and it turns out better than if somebody would try to, um, you know, plan some kind of generic video that's like, wow, look at them, there's girls, there's guys, look how pretty they are. And I'd rather show people in their natural habitat saying, well, yeah, they're very beautiful, and they're very real, and it's very nice, you know. Very cool. <laughs> it's very low budget I mean everything we do is totally DIY we don't have like a big production thing or you know there's nobody like uh, actually we get very little help from anybody everything that we do pretty much um, Scott and I have done ourselves you know Recently. as far as the production and the videos and uh, as of late getting things out like that yeah I remember um, you used to call me quite a bit we talk about what what once every day pretty much and yeah. you'd just be walking around you'd take the bus and you'd, you'd go out and um you just walk around different places go to the park and and just be around people and i always thought that was kind of cool that i mean every day you just had to be around people and well yeah because it's all about you know. yeah because I want, to, I want i want to i want i want people to see people i don't want to have you know like posing and that kind of thing it just bores me or, you know, I don't want to have a video of just, like, here we are playing, here's what we look like, and here's the song. It's like, to me, I don't want to see that from anybody, and I surely don't want to be a part of that for us, you know? Yeah. I would rather have yeah. people see people. You're all real, right? I try to be real. I mean, we all try to be real, but, you know, we get attacked a lot for it, too. Like, you need better production. <laughs> you need to have your songs more, right? And it's like, well, the thing is, I know oh. that there's better... I know there's better musicians, I know there's better quality recordings, I know there's, you know, this or that, but the thing about the goat skins is that what we do, it's real and it's raw, and what you're getting is, is straight up rock and roll. It's not polished, you know what, it's not, you know... What you're doing is something, and I, I think the reason why you succeed in what you're doing is, is because it's, you're doing something that you believe in, and it doesn't matter what somebody else says and no, it just reminded me of a quote i've got painted on my bathroom wall that that is um you know opinions are like assholes everybody's got one and i say right. that quite often and, and there's nothing more true to me that you know ev everybody does have one right and, 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 like the thing about the, and, and the thing about opinion in our music is it's not really our opinion that we write and sing about that we try to keep it as general so that somebody thinks like anybody can think this song is about me you know, it's like the, every song is about you and is about everything, and it's about all of us. You know, it's not like this is a song about me and what I went through, because who cares what I went through or what Scott went through or what anybody went through. This is a song about we observed everybody going through that everybody's going through, and with any luck, they'll relate to it, and maybe it'll help them get through the next day knowing that they're not alone in this whole thing because we're all in this shithole together. 
Oh, yeah. And maybe we can bring together a little bit more love, you know? Well, let me, why has why it got to be a shithole, dude? Man, I kind of like it here, you know? Well, not yeah, yeah, a shithole. <laughs> well, I'm not talking about a geographical shithole. I'm talking about like a shithole in your mind where you think there's no way out of it, you know? I understand. I do understand. And you know what? A lot of people live like that, and I've lived like that before, you know, just just feeling down and feeling like, you know, everything just sucks, and it doesn't. It's 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 a beautiful world. It's not bad, yeah. I've come to terms with my poverty and um, loneliness, and um, I embrace my asexuality, and um, I really don't care about anything except for spreading the word to people who care to hear it that relate, you know? And other than that, if they don't like what we do, we're not, we're not that kind of band, you know? Yeah, yep. I think that's cool. I, I can totally respect that for sure. So um, let's let's go ahead and check out the shout box. We got Alicia in there that says, "Bang a bee gong, goat skins for life." Alicia, she's. <laughs> let's see, what a bow hit. Um, Ryan says, "You got to talk about the battle of the bands fiasco. Good times, love." Oh, here's one. Yeah, the battle of the band. We got invited to this thing in in a. Uh, it was somewhere in Pennsylvania where um, we were invited to do it. We didn't realize that for the whole thing, you had to have like four cover songs to enter the thing. We didn't realize till we got there. So um, we got up to play, and then it was like we didn't. We, we've never done a cover song, and um, I would get up there and I said, "Well, this is a B side to a Led Zeppelin song you probably never heard." And we do one of our songs, and, and we did that through all of our songs. Said, "Oh, this is the B side of a Rolling Stone song you've never heard." Blah blah blah. And I think the kids that were in the audience all realized what we were doing. So they obviously we won the competition. And at the end of the competition, we said, "You know, we don't really want whatever the prize was. You know, give it to the people or whatever." And and I thought that was really cool because, for one thing, the kids realized what we were doing, and hopefully. They learned from it and did the same, you know. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I do like that one. Thank you, Ryan. And um, Polly Prozac says, um, no, he doesn't say anything. He says, goat skins rock on YouTube. And he went ahead and posted a link in the shout box. So, um, yeah, y'all go ahead and check out the goat skins. But don't do it till after the show because, you know, we're live right now. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks for doing that for us, Polly. And um, do y'all want to do another live one? Um, I, I, well, we can do probably, um, yeah. Down on Me might be nice. Yeah, this is yeah, For, uh, cool. whoever that, um, requested Down on Me, we could do that live for him right now. I'm trying to, trying to look back and I don't see who did it, but, um, yeah, you guys. I think it was Sam. With which ones you do live. Somebody <laughs> named Sam. This is for you, Sam. Somebody named Sam. Okay. okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
about that song so um we'll you know we'll go ahead and skip that and um I, i've got a question for you what what's um one of the songs that you've done throughout the years that that you can do over and over and over again and not mind it a bit uh myself i like black door really red like yeah, yeah that's the one we started one. out with yeah velvet fields we've been playing for a long time uh, I think that Velvet or Black Door Red is like really relevant for like the times we're going in, you know, the turmoil and stuff, and just the, the video with the people in the the march, the peace march and stuff, kind of emphasizes the whole fact that seeing all the people and all the different um, faces and and gear and everything that you see that like we're all each one of them, you know, and just seeing that many people in mass for one thing is a beautiful thing and the name actually came black door red is a play on the rolling stone song painted black where you know i see a red door and i want to paint it black and we just spun it yeah, like yeah. Uh, you know black door red now and uh the beginning is like uh, if you hear it it's the basically a size of g between sympathy for the devil and give me shelter and then we went into our own thing so um <laughs> I was surprised when you sent me the music um, that you didn't send me anything to the Rolling Stones because I see you posting it all the time. Well, I got a fetish for them. And I'll tell you why. It's not so much that, you know, like I'm, I'm so in love with Mick Jagger and Keith Richards, but the reason why I have such a fetish for them is because of their relevance and um, longevity that um, it's proof that you know, a band can stay together and keep doing what they do and they don't have to stop or with egos or anything and and still maintain their um, credit, you know what I mean? Yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. and until something like that comes along, I'll probably like that, but I don't think we're going to see that in our lifetime again. So between, uh, I mean, what a group, you know? I don't know. I, I At Music World Radio here, we get like tons and tons and tons of underground bands here that mm -hmm. I think just, just don't have the opportunity to get to where they need to go. So, I mean, I, I, I can totally dig what you're saying, but as well, I think that there's a lot of bands out there that have that same potential that just oh, don't sure. have the, yeah. Well, the means, yeah. you know, to get there. Yeah, I, I agree too, and I hope they all do. But I, I think that... Um if you lose, like once people start getting paid, somehow it seems like they lose focus on what they started to write about, or you know they lose um, contact with the people that they were writing for, or why they were writing, and they get yeah. locked up. And you know you surround yourself with gold, or you know you go from drinking rock gut whiskey to drinking high shelf, and and you forget that you know you remember when you were scrimping just to get a, a forty ounce. You know what I mean? And now you've got yeah. cases of uh, import beer. And you forget.